Before you start examination, you should introduce yourself, take permission from the patient, and uh, hand hygiene and perfect exposure. We are going to examine the thyroid gland. As you know, thyroid gland is uh, have a hormone, and this hormone it's either normal or hyper or hypo. In each condition, the examination may be different. So the examination of thyroid consists of four parts. Examination of the neck, which is the side of thyroid gland. Examination of the eyes in case of a Graves disease. And examination of the hand. And examination of the leg also in Graves disease. So. When we examine patient with thyroid gland, we should look to the patient in general because in hyperthyroidism, the patient is anxious, agitated, maybe there is a protrusion of the eyeball, while in the hypothyroid patient, there is buffiness in the lower area of the eye and there is decrease uh, a hair in the outside of the eyebrow and there is a buffiness of the face. So we are going to start with thyroid examination. As any examination, we start with inspection and we are going to inspect the neck from the front and the from the side. And to differentiate between the thyroid swelling and other neck swelling we should ask the patient to swallow uh, a plaridic. The thyroid gland move with the swallowing. And why it move with the swallowing? Because the thyroid gland is invested with the pretracheal fascia and the pretracheal fascia attached to the larynx which move during the swallowing. While other neck masses will not move with the swallowing. So the, the first task is to ask the patient to swallow okay then to see whether there is any dilated veins any scar any abnormal pigmentations any sinuses or fistula sinuses in the line indicate thyroglossal fistula and sometimes sinuses in the anterior aspect of sternocleidomite mastoid indicate a brachial cyst fistula. Then we ask the patient to protrude his tongue. Let the sonic. Right In fibroglossal cyst, the swelling move upward during protrusion of the tongue. And why? Because the thyroglossal cyst is attached to the base of the tongue by a thyroglossal duct. Then we ask the patient to Lift his hand by this maneuver. We are going to narrow the thoracic inlet, and in the retrosternal extension of the goiter, there is pressure on neck vein, lead to congestion of the face. So, in the uh, retrosternal goiter, we have to do what we call it a Pemberton test which is elevation of the hand of the patient. Sometimes when the patient is bulky, short neck, and the thyroid is not clear. So we ask him to do what we call it a pizzillo maneuver. We ask the patient to grasp his hands. So we take it to the other side. And the other By this maneuver, the the, the swelling will be more clear by this test, so called Pizzello. So this is uh, an inspection of thyroid glands. Okay, now we are going to palpate the thyroid gland. Palpation of thyroid gland should be conducted from the back, but before we are going back, we, we should Palpate the three things from the front. The front, which is the 
temperature compared with thyroid gland in hyperthyroidism, there is um, increase in the temperature at the site of the thyroid. Okay, we compare it with the lower chest and tenderness. If there is thyroid swelling, you will look to the patient face if it is tender or not, and the tracheal position. Okay, so whether it is central and or this maneuver, this is a tracheal position. Sometimes when I carotid pulsation from the front, okay, then we have to go to the back. In the back, we have to put our thumb in the nap of the neck, like that, and fingers or hands on the either side of the neck. We feel the gland one after the other. We should not palpate both lobes at the same time. We fixed one and we feel with the other. And during palpation, we ask the patient to swallow. This to see the lower edge of the thyroid. If the thyroid is retrosternal, we cannot get below the gland. While if it is not, we can get below the gland. So we fix the left, we examine the right. And as any lump, we have to Describe the criteria of the lump size, size, shape, surface, whether it's smooth or nodular, consistency, uh, attachment to the skin or to the deeper structure, mobility, attachment to the sternocleidomastoid, and in hypervascular or in hyperthyroidism, we have to examine for a thrill. Gentle touching of the gland to feel the thrill because if the, we press on thyroid more, we can get the um, transmission pulsation from the carotid. So a gentle examination of the gland to feel the thrill. So this is the um, examination or palpation of the gland. Also, we have to examine the cervical lymph nodes at the same time submental submandibular preauricular postauricular occipital cervical group anterior and posterior upper middle lower and supraclavicular lymph nodes so this is a palpation of the thyroid gland then we have to percuss. Percussion of the thyroid gland is on the manabarium sterni. This is a resonant percussion note, while in rotus sternal goiter there is dull percussion note. Okay? And uh, Auscultation. The auscultation, you have to put your stethoscope on the upper part of thyroid gland at the superior thyroid artery to hear a brewing in the hypervascular gland or in thyrotoxicos. So this is the examination of the neck for thyroid gland. In Graves' disease, we have to examine the eyes. Okay, eye signs in thyroid the Graves' disease. First sign is lid retraction. What is a lid retraction? Normally, the upper lid covering the upper limbus. Okay, in Graves' disease, there is a spasm of the levator palpebrae superioris. So there is elevation of the eyelid above the sclera. So the sclera become visible. This is, we call it, lid retraction. So 
How we know that this lead retraction is it a real one due to the protrusion of the eyeball or due to the spasm of the eyelid? We have to do an Navier sign. What is an Navier sign? We have to go back, tilt the head back, and we see at the level of superciliary ridges. If, the, if I can see the eyeball, this is a true exophthalmus. But if I cannot see the eyeball, this is this means is it due to a spasm of levator palpebrae superiors. So this is a lid retraction. Now we have to do a lid lag. Normally, normally the eyeball and the eyelid follow each other. Fixed, fixed third so the eyeball following the eyelid. In exophthalmos, the eyelid cannot follow the eyeball. We have to do the test slightly rapid because there is a muscle fatigue and there is a spasm in levator palpebrae superior. So the lid, we call it a lid lag. The, the upper lid cannot follow the eyeball. Okay, this is a lid lag. Other test is a Givroy sign. What is a Givroy sign? We ask the patient to tilt his head slightly down and we ask him to look up. So there is a wrinkle. In exophthalmos, there is absence of wrinkle. Okay, this is a Givroy sign. Other sign is Mobius sign. Normally, the eyeball converge by this test, while in exophthalmos there is absence of convergence. We call it a, a Mobius sign. Other signs there is a chemosis with congestion and the swollen conjunctiva. In later stages, there is uh, corneal ulceration and even optic atrophy. So this is the eye sign which is only seen in the Graves disease due to the position of fat fluid in the retrobulbar spaces. Okay. Now we have to examine the hand. We examine the hands. Okay. Uh, the hand should be out stretched and the finger is separated from each other. Okay? And we look to them. In thyrotoxicosis, there is a tremor. Even in, if there is a fine tremor, we can put a piece of paper over it to see it clearly. Also, we have to examine the pulse, radial pulse. In thyrotoxicosis, there is tachycardia, so you have to measure the rate, rhythm, and volume. Also, we have to examine the palm. In thyrotoxicosis, it is moist, and there is palmar erythema, and it is warm, and there is thinning or wasting of the thinner and hypothinner muscle and inter muscles between the metatarsal or metacarpal bones. Also, in, one, in, in, um, in, thyroid, in the Graves disease, there is what we call it acropachy, thyroid acropachy, which is separation of the nail from the nail bed. And there is thickening of metacarpal bone due to the superiosteal bone deposition. This is seen only in Graves disease. So this is the hand sign, okay? And lastly, we have to examine the uh, legs for pretibial myxedema, which is only occur in Graves disease and one to two percent due to the deposition of the glycosamine of glycan lead to thickening of the skin. So we examine for edema at this side. And thank you very much.